All right. So today, since I've gained a little traction and uh, I didn't know what else to do this week, I think we should just do a Dark Souls tier list, you know? I'm gonna try to do Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2. Uh, I've not played Bloodborne. I'll move these out of the way real quick. And we'll also do Dark Souls 3. When I'm, when we'll cross this bridge when we get to it, I kinda wanna do Sekiro. The way I like to do tier lists is how good these bosses are relative to each other. It's not just like, oh, like example, oh, I love Pinwheel, put him in S tier. And like Moonlight Butterfly is okay. You know, I don't think she's that bad, A tier. But not, not like this, like comparatively to Pinwheel, Moonlight Butterfly is way worse in this example. So boom, F tier, you know? It's like, it's just the disparity between them. Uh, I'm also not gonna do Elden Ring. Not even like the big bosses or anything. I I hope you know this by now. I do not like Elden Ring. And uh, I haven't finished Demon Souls, so we can't, I can't really do Demon Souls yet. I'm not done with it. Purple one here. Triple S, you know, that, that that's pretty basic, triple S. Yeah, I'm just gonna start ranking. And if there's something that comes up that I need to put it into a separate tier, I'll make one for that. First up, Asylum Demon. Uh, huh, I don't, I'm kind of leaning towards C tier because well, how do I want to make this tier list, actually? Because do I want to make it just the physical fight itself or more what the fight's about and the circumstances surrounding the fight? Because if you add everything the Asylum Demon is about and everything that it's trying to teach you, sure, it's a pretty decent fight, right? Like, oh, it teaches you, you know, you, you got to come back when you're stronger or, you know, when you're better. It's kind of the thesis statement for Dark Souls, but on its own, it's kind of a it's got kind of a boring move set. You can kind of circumvent him by just moving behind him. For now, I can change my mind later. I'm going to include stuff like the run back and the circumstances surrounding the fight in my in my ranking. Just I'm just trying to be consistent about that because I've seen tier lists where they'll mention that for one boss and then just not mention it for another boss when it's just as valid there. So with the circumstances, great tutorial fight, great first boss of the series, I think it's pr a pretty solid B tier. Now Taurus Demon, I think the fact that he gets reused later in the game, even if it's just in one location where they just put like five of him, I think that kind of bogs down the fight a lot as well as it's kind of reusing the plunging gimmick, which makes it just a little less inspired. The moveset is kind of weird. I don't like how the toes hurt you if you roll into him. It really just kind of slows the fight for me. It does, you can use the gold pine resin and I feel like that's kind of intended. I know that's not set in stone that that's the intended method, but it kind of feels like it's intended. I like the concept of like, kind of the Tower Knight-esque thing where like, oh, you have to climb up the ladder and kill these two guys before you fight this boss. It's cool how you can fall off the edge. He can fall off the edge. I think overall, he's he's got a lot going for him. Like a lot of special stuff, a lot of special circumstances, but I, I can't really put him anything higher than D. And D, D is just like a little below average, right? It's not like almost horrible, because that's what we have E tier for. Out of the eight tiers, it's six. It's six out of eight, you know? Bell Gargoyles, see, I don't like this fight as much as a lot as people would think. I think it's a fine fight. Like, I think it's okay, but the Hollow Room run back is really annoying, especially if you don't have like an optimal build. Some people say it's kind of a tutorial for like learning how to go explore and upgrade your weapons. But I feel like if you're using a lot of weapons, like it just doesn't track, right? It does. It's not that valid of a of a tutorial, even. I don't think it's done that well. The fight itself is fine. I don't really know that Dark Souls One is the best game to do multi multi fights in. I think Dark Souls Two and Three will do a lot better multi fights compared to Dark Souls One, like the Bell Gargoyles. The way their flying attacks like synergize with each other don't really at all for me. Even when the second one comes in and he has a worse moveset and he just kind of spams fire at you the whole time. 
I don't know, that fire kind of slows the fight down. It doesn't make it more fun. It's not a better challenge. It's just, oh, okay, I can't really do anything over there. And if you're, like, anywhere but, like, optimal positioning, you just get fucking... You just get zipped off the map. Like, like where are you going to go? You're just going to take two hits to the fire because it lasts, it lasts that long. And so you're just going to get hit, and then you're going to be a hit stun because you don't have enough poise, and then you're going to get hit again, and then... Even if you're using a shield, your, your stamina is going to break it, you know. Maybe that's just a skill issue, but I don't... Uh, Bell, Gargoyle, Bell Gargoyles are, are kind of a C-tier fight. Because they do have the tail cut, which the Gargoyle Tail Axe is one of my favorite weapons. Uh, they have that going for them, and they also have... The, the solo fight's pretty fine. They have low poise. There's a lot of ways to circumvent them, but, like, I don't know. They're just not it, right? Now, the Capper Demon, you'll hear so many criticisms of him. But, especially, I, I feel like I'm in a spot to defend him, especially because that Illusory Wall video that released recently. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. I'll, if I remember to, I'll put it up on screen. There's, he's not really that bad. If you stay up front, the second dog doesn't see you, so you can dodge the first attack from the Capra, take out the first dog, and then you can just deal with the other dog and the Capra like you did the first. I think, I think that's a pretty easy way to go about it. There's a lot of different things you can do for different builds. You can use poise, you can use stealth with like, you know, the ring of fog or whatever, because you can you can go through dark root early. I feel like going through dark root early isn't that bad. The run back is kind of really annoying. I don't like the run back. Those thieves, and especially those two dogs right in front of the door. I feel like you kind of have to take out one of those dogs. Like, I know on my toxic, uh, always toxic server run, I used a running attack to take out the first dog because I could time it. And then just the one dog is manageable, but the two kind of bottleneck you. And especially when you're going through that fog door, if you're not, like, really fast, like, super quick, thieves will, uh, backstab you while you're walking through the fog gate, which is really annoying. But I think the, the fight itself is okay, too. That little staircase really makes it really nice. The only annoying thing is when the Capra jumps off of the staircase at you, and then you take damage, but you don't even see the hitbox. I'm kind of split on Capra too. I think I'll put him above the Bell, uh, Bell Gargoyles, like C tier. We have the Moonlight Butterfly next. This fight sucks, okay? You have to wait, and you're probably gonna two cycle him no matter where you are at the game, unless you have a really good build. Like, I think I've only one three cycled him once, and that was the first time I fought him. She's also a really easy boss, too. Like, if if everything else fails, you just pull out a shield, and you kindle the bonfire. And if you're running from the Andre bonfire, that one's probably already kindled, because that's just such a hub for everything, you know? And you just outheal the damage that... the magic damage. And if you really can't, you'd get you'd go wait until you get to Anorlando, and you get Havel's shield, and that's got good magic uh, defense. It's got a long run back. Not that you're gonna die. The Divine Ember is after it, which is useful, but not, like, crazy useful. Now, Pinwheel. I like Pinwheel. I think Pinwheel is actually a really well-made boss. If they turned the health up, it would be a really difficult boss. It would be a really fun boss. If they, like, all they had to do was turn the health up, or just put them in earlier in the game, really. Because those clones do a lot of damage, they can get really overwhelming if you don't deal with them. I think Pinwheel is a really good boss, bogged down by a bad runback, because me personally, I always go through the catacombs with Vamos. If you don't get the Vamos bonfire, you have a very you have a pretty long run back, and you're probably also not gonna get the catacombs bonfire by patches. Because that's a really niche bonfire. I'm sure a lot of people even watching don't really know about that hidden wall bonfire. Yeah, it's got a really long run back, especially with those bone wheel skeletons. Those are really annoying. Other than that, though, I think I think Pinwheel's a pretty decent boss. Compared to the Bell Gargoyles, I would say better. I'd say better than the Capra Demon. Is it, like, a majority better than the Capra Demon? I'd say so. Better than Asylum Demon. I'd say so. I think, I think high B tier is that. Gaping Dragon. Gaping Dragon, a test of endurance, right? It's how long can you last against this boss. I don't think this boss is that hard even with that. Maybe I'm just... Maybe I just have high endurance, but the run back is really short, especially if 
especially the depths in general, is just really short. If you just, you know, slide down the slide, you know, get the rat. I'm doing it in reverse order in my head, but you can run through the depths in probably 30 seconds and make it to the Gaping Dragon, I think. I, I could probably do that if you're doing like an all bosses run. It just has a lot of health. I'm pretty sure the Gaping Dragon, yeah, the Gaping Dragon has 4,000 health. 4,250, and the Gaping Dragon has more health than Gwyn by about 200, which I think is insane. This, like, fifth boss in the game you fight has more health than the final boss, which is kind of crazy to me. It's really just a show of endurance. I don't think that's necessarily good. I feel like there could be better ways to do that. The fight is just boring, right? Every time I fight him, maybe I fight him wrong, who knows? But, you know, you get you get behind him because you wanted that tail you want that tail cut, because that tail cut, even though it takes forever, severely limits some of his most dangerous attacks, like those tail swipes. So you go behind him for the tail cut, you get one or two hits in, then he jumps up in the air, rotates to you, and you have to walk away. Then he lands, and you have you can't immediately run around him because as he lands, there's like hitboxes at his feet where he lands for like two or three seconds. So you just have to wait there for a couple seconds and then run behind him. And by then, he's already, he's like noticing that you're running behind him. And sometimes he just instantly jumps up again. But like waiting for an attack is just boring and slow. And when he goes full face down on you, sometimes he'll just walk at you. And it is, especially even if you're behind him when he walks, sometimes he just hits you and then he hits you into him. And then you get up and then you get hit again. And that's just an instant kill for that part of the game. Like, there's just so many little, little quirks that make it slow and boring and clunky. And when he throws up, and that does durability damage, I don't know about you, but I always forget to buy the repair box from anyone. So it's just like, okay, I have to go back out of the depths, back to Firelink, back to Andre to buy the repair box and get my stuff repaired. And that's, like, so annoying. Like, it's it's unbelievably just like, okay, dude, why, why did you do that? I don't like him very much. I think he's fine, design-wise. Like, design, we're, this isn't a design tier list, but I think he looks pretty cool. I, You know what I wish they did? I wish they kind of did... Okay, hear me out. I wish they did kind of what they did with the Beta Chaos, where it's like... Because it has that hole in the arena, like, way at the back, but I wish there was more holes in the entire arena, right? Like, the Gaping Dragon is big enough, so he's not going to fall through them, but... Like, what if there were holes in the arena, and he, like you lowered the health of the Gaping Dragon, and instead, it when it hits you, because every attack does pretty good, like knockdown or knockback or something, you just got knocked off and you died, right? Because then, then that's like more of an execution thing, right? I don't know. I think that would have made it a lot better. Quaylag? Quaylag. Okay. The thing with Quaylag, for me, the run... Okay, first thing I can point out, the run back is annoying. And if you have high... Unless you have high resistance, you're getting poisoned. And I don't really carry Purple Moss on me when I play the game. Just That's just because how I, pl I play the game. So that makes the fight instantly I have a timer. Or I can only get hit so many times. But that's just a me thing. I know that's not really how the fight works most of the time. The run back itself is kind of annoying if you don't have the Rusted Iron Ring. I don't know why you would go back to the Asylum that early in the game. So really the Rusted Iron Ring thing doesn't matter. But... Quaylag, their attacks kind of miss you, right? Like, I feel like everybody who's ever played the game has figured out you can stand under Quaylag really easily. And so her attacks are just really meaningless. It's just, you attack her until she, like, either does the stand-up thing where she puts her, her, like, spider legs down and that explodes, or she does her AoE, and you can't even really tell she's doing the AoE from the back, which I think, actually, that's points towards Quaylag. Because I feel like most of the monster non-humanoid bosses really struggle, like, when you are behind them. Like, what are they going to do? Except for maybe the Bell Gargoyles and the Gaping Dragon. Because those guys, they have, like, tails on their back they'll hit you with. But it's like... Quaylag, she's really sneaky about it. Because that AoE does um, insane damage. Especially if you try to roll away from it. And you get the instability damage and you just die. But... She, she does the sneaky laydown, and unless you really, really know what to look for, it's just impossible to tell. And I think that actually is points towards her. I don't think she goes above Capra. I don't like her lava. I think the hitboxes on it are janky. And it's like sometimes janky in your favor, and sometimes janky 
against you. And I think even if it works uh, towards you, I don't like jank. Just because it makes it makes the game less fun, right? So, yeah, I don't think she's better than Capra, but I do like her better than the Gargoyles. Now, the Iron Golem. The Iron Golem is a gimmick fight after the gimmick area that Sense Fortress is, so I think that's good. The Iron Golem is kind of, yeah, no, he, you, you know, you do enough damage to him if you have any semblance of a good build, and then you knock him off the edge, and it's like a 30 second fight. You know, that's fine. It's a gimmick fight. I think gimmick fights, I think gimmick fights are at their best when if you know how to beat the gimmick fight, you can beat it at like that. You can just, boom, it's over with, right? Gimmick fights at their worst are, oh, I have to do this, th this thing that's kind of annoying, and like special and different for like five minutes and I just have to run around and you know you know talk about something later but if you don't fight the iron golem like that him falling down is, is just an opportunity for free damage and the fight itself is actually not that annoying if you get rid of the firebomb giant which you can which I like to do by just rolling through the firebombs just because it doesn't really take it takes like five seconds and it's not you don't have to deal with the annoying giants which are kind of not fun to fight but the fight itself is pretty fun, you know? He's got all sorts of different attacks. You really kind of feel like you're weaving under, like, this big guy who's, like, you know, huge, and he's got all this power, but you just kind of weave under him. And the only thing I don't like is the grab. I think the grab is really weird timing-wise. I think someone that big shouldn't move the way he does in that grab. And also, I've seen the hitbox visualization. It is really bad. Like, it will... I, I've gotten hit myself in really stupid ways where it's like, okay, I don't even, I was literally nowhere near him. It's not that I'm under him. It's that I'm in front of him and I'm just really far away, but he'll tilt in a way where like he just barely grabs you and it just doesn't work, right? I think I put him, I think I leave him here. I was going to move him to wherever he is. I think, I think he's here, but yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense to me. Uh, Priscilla, I've only fought Priscilla like two times. I don't like, I don't really go through the painted world, and when I do, I do the dragon skip. I think she's a fine gimmick. It's kind of what I said, where it's like the the more bad end of the gimmick, where it's like, okay, she's invisible, I have to wait for her footsteps. You hit her a few times, you break her poise, she goes on invisible, and then, you know, the fight's fine from there. I don't know. She's not, there's not really much to say about Priscilla in my own head. Maybe that's just because I haven't fought her enough, but I'm not too inclined to say I hate her. Or I like her. I think I think she goes better than Taurus Demon and Gaping Dragon, who have elements that like I don't like about them. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. Okay, Ornstein and Smell. I have gone very back and forth between my opinions of this these guys. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I hate them. It's just I just need to encapsulate my thoughts. You have multiple ways to make the run back easy, whether you open that shortcut or you do the shortcut over the stairs. So the run back isn't really an issue. You're not really going to fight anyone. The beginning of the fight is a little weird just because of Ornstein. If you know what to look for and it's not like your very first time in the fight, you're going to be ready for him. In my experience, he doesn't usually instantly come at you. Like, he very, very rarely does that. He'll usually stop and start a couple times before he goes at you. So that gives you time to just, like, get ready for it, which I think is fine. I think in regards of how their movesets synergize... They synergize really well. They cover each other really well. I think that's points towards the bosses if I was doing a design tier list. I think in terms of a gameplay tier list, sometimes they work together too well, and it's like there's not really anywhere I can get in without physically taking damage, like, to myself. And that's not a positive to me. I think I'll consider it neutral because, like, yeah, you want a boss to be difficult, right? You want them to synergize together, and you want them to fight together like that, right? I mean, obviously, sometimes they're not going to fight together at all, but that's kind of, you know, up in the, you know, the AI messes up. That's not really points against the boss, because it doesn't happen consistently. I just don't... I don't like Phase 2. Phase 2 is really boring either way, because with Smo, it's, oh, he jumps a ton, and sometimes he runs at you. And with Ornstein, it's, he jumps a couple times, and he'll grab you. And it's like, okay, it's kind of boring. I don't really think they needed to do that. I think they could have just had it where you kill one and then you kill the other, and that's fine. I don't know. I, I'm i just really uninterested in, in the boss, right? Like, it's like, this boss is here, 
and it's really difficult, actually. It's one of the more difficult. I think it's the most difficult boss in, in the base game. Um, but it's like, I don't know, there's not too much to say about it that hasn't already been said to death, even though I kind of do talk about that stuff anyway. I really can't think of, a, like, just a way to put into words why I would like it or not like it. I think overall, it just ends up being a little clunky with this fight speed of Dark Souls 1. It's kind of a slower game compared to 3 in Elden Ring, and even 2, comparatively. It So I think I might put it... I think I might just leave it here, right? Because, yeah, I think Iron Golem, as a gimmick fight and as a fight in Sens, works better compared to the end of Anor Londo, which is one of the most most annoying areas. I mean, Anor Londo itself is kind of a gimmicky area. I wouldn't consider... I don't like to call duo fights, like, gang fights or gimmick fights. I don't. I think that terminology is kind of a misnomer. It doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't make that much sense. I think it just goes here. If you want to talk about a gimmick fight, though, Gwendolyn is, like... I feel like it's the gang fight in this game, right? Or not gang. It's, I think it's the gimmick fight. It's, oh, guy shooting magic at you from far away, and then he teleports away. It's just what a magic build does in this game. Or in... Really, in this series, actually. I don't think he's a good boss. Like, I, he's really... He's inoffensive if you have, like, a good build. But he will one-shot you, and most people are going to experience him through Dark and Orlando. Most people aren't going to get the ring, and then they're going to go to him. Or most people aren't going to do the glitch to break open the door. I mean, in that case, you have to run across the rafters every time you die. Or you have to go run up to the Duke's archives every time you die. And, like, that's dumb. Right? That, that makes the run back annoying. If you don't, then fine. You know, you have the, like, two-second run back. Even then, the fight still takes forever. If you have a really good... It's just, like, so much running. And the attacks aren't even difficult to dodge. You have one... You, have, you really have one time you have to input a dodge. And it's when he does the big one, like, ball at you. When he does the tiny balls, you kind of run behind the pillar. And then when he does the arrows, you just zigzag, right? It's, it's not that difficult. It just takes a while. Stray Demon also takes a while. I think Stray Demon gets points for it taking a while, just being because how tanky he is. He drops a slab. The run back is right there no matter what. It's kind of a cool en en like in entry, especially because you know, you're know you re-entering the, the asylum. You figure out you can do this thing, and you're just walking back through the, the arena like, wow, this is, this is where I was. And then you fall through into a new boss fight. And like, whoa, that's cool, right? I think that's a positive. I don't like how long it takes, and I don't like the AoEs, specifically because I think in Dark Souls 1, the AoEs are poorly telegraphed. I don't really talk about this. I don't- the, the effects just don't telegraph really when the AoEs have gone away. I have, like, I've gotten used to it, but, like, I still think they're poorly telegraphed. They'll- they're not- they're bigger than they look, and they last longer than they appear to, which really just makes- the fight like fights with AoEs like that clunky. Like we'll talk about that again when I get to the Four Kings. But yeah, I mean he's not he's not a good boss. Sif is fun. I like Sif. I like how he's defending Artorias. I think that's cool. I know this isn't real. I'm not talking about design. But I guess it's more the circumstances of the fight, right? You're going up to, you're trying to get the ring of a of a Artorias, right? That's the only reason you do the fight. Like progression wise. So I think that's a positive. I like I like how agile she is. I think it really lends to her attacks and everything. I think I think that's designed really well, just the way she's like quick, quick, quick. The run back is kind of annoying, but unless you're like a shield user, you're not really dying much to this boss, I feel. Yeah, I mean, I think she can go in A tier. Really. The four kings. I might have the most experience with the Four Kings out of any Souls, out of, out of any, like, Dark Souls boss, period. Except for maybe a Dark Souls 3 boss, because I did the All Four Kings run, and that run was... I learned everything about this this boss. It moves insanely quick. I think it's fast, the fastest move speed in the game. Its attacks do less damage the closer you are to it. It's not a, it's not like a, pro, like a progressively less. There's a threshold where if you get close enough, it'll do little damage. Um... If the fight didn't take place on completely flat ground, if you got up, like, even a little bit, most of their attacks would miss you. You really don't have to dodge in the fight, like, pretty much ever. The only times you have to dodge are, like, the 
the two side swipes where like he, one of them will swing one way and then they'll charge up and swing the other way back. Which really makes it a really easy fight. I mean, it's just a DPS race. So on a normal playthrough, after you do that long run back, unless you do the shortcut I do in my videos, where you go to the ghost house, you jump, you uh, go out there, you, you can jump down the broken staircase, and then you can jump off to the left, and then it takes you straight to the boss. It's a pretty short run back from Fire Link. If you don't do that, it's a really long run back, though, which is points against it. But again, it's not a very hard fight. It's if you know how to just like, oh, okay, you kind of you kind of stay behind him. You get you get under, especially like the diagonal swipes. You can kind of move straight straight around him. The thrust you go behind him. You can just maneuver yourself around the kings to where you never have to dodge, unless they do the AOE, which is a really big time waster and annoying, as well as being really poorly telegraphed uh, explosion wise. And then the grab, which takes your humanity, which I think is a really cool detail. How the grab will suck your humanity out because it's like the dark it's like the dark hand thing that you can do but it's also because you know they're the that's like a lore thing i think that i think i do like the four kings on challenge runs i don't like it but this isn't like an on challenge runs tier list because like on challenge runs oh i'm not doing that much damage or oh i have to i have really long attacks so it's like okay i'm gonna be fighting four kings at the same time and at that point, they all stand right outside your range. If you move in the wrong direction, they'll hit you, and then you'll be hitting the very tip, so you'll just take all the damage, and 98% you know, of your health is gone, and then they'll keep spamming projectiles. And the projectiles will follow you to the ends of the earth, because they don't ever disappear. You better bring a good magic shield for that. Um, yeah, but I think it's a fine boss in the normal on a normal run. I think... I think I can put it above the Asylum Demon. Ah, I think I can go above Pinwheel. Okay, Ceaseless. I, again, gimmick fight, really harmless. Harmless run back. Yeah, I, I think I think that's all I need to say. Demon Fire Sage, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make its own tier. It's gonna get its own tier. Because Demon Fire Sage, it's a repeat. It's, it's literally the straight demon. I'm, not, I'm that's it the centipede demon would be a fine fight if it wasn't in a lava arena I think once you get over to the area with the green titanite uh, the large green titanite but you have to wait like you have to wait a minute just for it to like walk over and then it'll do the long range grab attack like four times and then it'll walk towards you more and then the fight's fine it's not anything special you know it does a lot of stalling it does kind of the gaping like sometimes it'll jump up a lot like the gaping dragon I think it's just below the Gaping Dragon, because it's kind of that. And then it gives you the ring. I'm mi I'm mixed on the Bed of Chaos. I'm mixed. Because I've gotten really good at it, where I can run and just do the entire fight in, like, one life. And it feels really cool just to, like, do all this parkour. I think it's a cool thing, because you're not doing vertical parkour, because that would make it horrible. You're doing horizontal parkour with the jumps. I think that's cool. I think if you know the boss and you know you know everything about it, it's fun. If you're not, if you don't know everything about it, and you die, you have like a you have like a one and a half minute run back or a three minute run back if you take the shortcut, and it's like okay, this sucks. On top of that, I mean, the 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 hand swipes are annoying. Yeah, I mean it, it it's it's good if you know like if you're experienced and if you're not experienced, I, it's not that fun. I think I think it's a D tier. It's better than the centipede demon. Better than the gaping dragon. I wouldn't put it above Taurus demon. And Seath, Seath is either one of the worst, like, hardest fights in the game if you don't know what you're doing. Or you can stand in one crevice and just negate the boss unless he does an AoE. It's kind of like Quaylag in a way. The thing with Seath is he has a really long run back with some really annoying parts. Like, that one part with the golden golem on the one crystal. I know you know what I'm talking about. Well, where are you? Where you'll just like slide off, where you're, you'll you'll just like slide off for no reason, and it's like okay, this run back sucks, right? Get the fuck around, jeez. Okay, so that said, I think I just I, you know he's bad. I wouldn't say he's straight demon or Gwendolyn bad. I would say he's better than the Moonlight Butterfly. Yeah, there's not really much else to say about him. So Nito. 
let's think about this. So first thing, me personally, I've gotten experience enough at the game where I can do the Nito run back without the Skull Lantern. Even with the Skull Lantern, that run back's annoying. I think that's a lot of points away from Nito, just because first playthrough of Dark Souls, you're going to be dying a lot. If not to the bosses, to the on the run back to the bosses, or just traversing the level. People play the game, especially on like a first playthrough, they will kill every enemy every time on the way to the boss. And that's okay. That's a good, that's like, that's, if you want to play the game that way, I'm not going to stop you. But for Nito specifically, you have the skeleton dogs, you have a skeleton archer, you have a silver knight. And it's just like really annoying. In, in that pinwheel room, especially, it's like, okay, what? It's just annoying, right? Like, I don't, I think a lot of the enemies on the run back are just annoying. Nito himself, those little skeletons aren't a problem. Those big skeletons are a problem. The little skeletons will die to Nito like that in one attack. They'll die every AoE, every AoE. But if you want to avoid the big ones, which you do, because that makes the fight really hard and really annoying. Uh, me personally, I've never permitted the skeletons because I don't think that's worth it. It's just not, uh, it doesn't really matter to me that much. But that is a valid strategy, and like, yeah, okay, and then that makes the fight kind of boring, I feel like. Because, like, Nito himself, he really does need other people to supplement his moveset, because he's just a little slow. But, if you don't perma the skeletons, and you don't want to trigger the big ones, you have, like, a really faux big arena. Like, it's not, it's not a big arena, it looks like it, it's pretending to be a big arena. But you have, like, this little, this little, like, almost like U-shape you can traverse in. And it's, like, really annoying... Especially for the AoEs, because sometimes you you like you see an AoE and you start running and you realize you run the wrong direction, so you just have to tank it and you're like, oh damn, okay. And that is a skill issue, but it's not great design. I think I like the move set of Nito. I think he's got a really cool design too, and I I know this is that doesn't count towards the boss. I do like his design. I like how he toxics you. I think that's really fitting, and for just kind of the the area of, of Tomb of the Giants. I think he needs a lot more moveset coverage, though, because, like, he can't really hit a lot of spots. His, uh, his, like, charge-up long-range attack is just really poorly telegraphed. He does, like, the Elden Ring delay where he's like, uh, 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 oh, well, I'm gonna go. Nope, now I'm gonna go, right? And he's like, he, like, kind of goes down, but then he goes a little faster, and it's like, okay, Especially with Dark Souls 1 rolling, you're a lot, you're really likely to get hit and just instantly get toxic while he's still walking towards you. And you're wasting like two S's just waiting for him to walk towards you. I feel like getting toxic is a natural part of the fight if you're not an expert. And that puts a timer on the fight. And that puts a good time, it's like, a, it's like a good timer on the fight. Because it's like, okay, you messed up and now you have to work harder to get this boss down. It's all because of your mistake, right? You didn't, you didn't walk into the fight got poisoned from the blight town swamp you got hit and so I was like, you got to pay for that i think that's cool so honestly he might he might go high a i'll put him in s for now actually but he's really likely to get moved down just relatively to sif yeah he's he's s right okay gwyn i feel like since gwyn is the only boss that can be parried i feel like you kind of have to have you parry him in mind if you don't parry him, you're, the fight's going to be near impossible. He swings so fast, he never lets up. If you try to heal, he's just going to hit you. He'll do three hit combos, he'll do grabs, he'll do kicks if you're using a shield. And he will destroy you. If you're using a shield, you might as well not even try. You got that fire damage, and you're just getting thrusted and kicked. And then he'll grab you, and since you're fat rolling, once you recover from the fat roll, he does another fast slash, and you just can't do anything, right? Especially if you do what I do, where you parry, and then you repost him, and then you drink an Estus. He has like a really high chance to do a slow slash, and if he doesn't, he either does a fast slash, and then he does a slow slash follow-up, which is easy to parry. Or he'll kick you or grab you, and if he grabs you, he'll probably do a slow slash or a fast slash after that, and then, you know, you're good. You can tank the fast slash, because you heal after every repost, which makes him a joke. The run back is way too long. And it's not even hard, it's just long. Like, none of those Black Knights are going to catch you if you're, like, remotely quick. I think that's really annoying. And just the run back, it's like, okay, what am I, like, what am I supposed to do? 
I don't I don't think he's a great boss. I think he's better than Ornstein and Smell. He's better than the Golem. I'm trying not to be influenced by like what the general consensus is. If you hear someone say, which boss is better, the Ceaseless Discharge or Gwyn? You're gonna say Gwyn every time. Really thinking about it, it's like, is Gwyn better? Because the Ceaseless Discharge discharge is like, it's just a gimmick fight. It's just a, it's just like a little thing you do. And I think that's fine. Gwyn is the final boss of the game and he's either insanely hard, you might as well not even try, not even fair, or you hit the parry button five times and you're, the game's over. So it's like that dichotomy, what what do you do with that? How do I balance that out into a, into a ranking? Because if I go hard final boss, you might not, you might as well not even try. I'm going to put him like here. You parry and he's a joke. I'm going to put him like here, right? So I think he goes like here. You balance that out. That, that makes sense. So in the, so now we're, we're at the Dark Souls 1 DLC now. The Sanctuary Guardian. The Sanctuary Guardian is really good just because it's a test to see if you're ready to get in the DLC. Because you can get into the DLC like instantly after Ornstein and Smell. You can do all the prep before, and then you can kill Ornstein and Smell, you can get the broken pendant, and then you can go to the DLC. But you're gonna get washed most times, right? You have to either be really good at the game, or you have to be ready. You have to be high enough level. And this boss is really quick. This boss has a lot of depth to it. A very varied moveset. Very, it's very fun, honestly. Like, you just feel just so energized and so pumped you know like the whole time i don't know it just really brings that vibe i don't like when there's two of them in the boss arena later but that's a different thing i think it's good that the bot the bonfire is just right there because you can leave if you want and you can you know you don't have a long run back instantly entering the dlc i think it's a good boss i think i think it goes in s and nito goes down to a i think that's fine artorius is overrated that that's the first thing i have to say he's not bad he's overrated i think when people hear the word overrated they're like oh you think this boss is bad or this thing sorry i'm i'm thinking too dark soulsy you think this thing is bad but no it's just i don't think the ranking is correct it's got a decently long run back a really long run back if you don't know the shortcut which i mean granted why wouldn't you but still uh it's got a little bit of like deceptive move set. Like he's got like a little bit of a deceptive move set because it's like when he does the multiple flips, if you dodge and you don't physically dodge out of the way, you get hit and then you get knocked down, and then you get knocked down again and again and again and you get hit by the whole com the whole combo. I think that's the thing with the Dark Souls one DLC is they like combos, and it's I'm I'm not playing like a fighting game. I don't want to sit and watch my opponent do their combo I want you to hit me and I take the damage I take then and that's it unless I get grabbed and that's fair but I want to take the damage I took I don't want to have to wait for oh you get a little bit of damage oh I'm almost up oh you get a little bit of damage you get a little bit of damage like, it, it's kind of annoying that being said I think it's a fun fight you have to stay engaged the whole time otherwise you're gonna get him to buff and then the fight's really over He's got a lot of a very move set. He's got a cool design. Again, that doesn't add anything. But I think he goes next to Sif. And that's kind of cool. I think I think I think he goes above Sif, but that's cool. And now Calamy. This is a personal gripe. This is my thing. I know that I'm wrong. I don't want to hear an argument to the contrary. Because I will never change my mind. And I'm not gonna elaborate. I don't like Kalami. He's gonna get his own. No, I'll be nice. He won't get his own tier. But he is the worst boss in the series. Okay, Manus. I don't know how much I particularly have to say on Manus. Uh, I haven't fought him that much, to be honest with you. He's got a decently long run back. The cutscene every time you enter is annoying. 
That's a, that's a really small thing, but it really gets to me when you when I'm on a tough run. Um, the combo, the combo's annoying. The spells are annoying. He has. I don't like those because I never really grab the fucking the whatever it's called the pendant thing. So it's just kind of like, oh damn. Uh, this he he did he does the spell with where all the things come at at you or come at him in, at the circle and I take most of my health. And then he'll do it again, and then I'm dead. Uh, I think the, like, the, like, dark, the, like, the soul rain is fine. Uh, he's kind of fun. He's kind he's okay. He's okay. I think he goes to, I think he goes above Priscilla. And that's Dark Souls 1, actually. Yeah, wow. Uh, I'll review these placements, uh... Looks fine. Pinwheel kind of feels wrong, right? I think I gave him too much credit. I think I didn't weigh the fact that he has so little health enough. I think I didn't really focus on that. I'm gonna move him below Gwyn. I think that looks a lot better. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Move on to Dark Souls 2. Last Giant. I think this is a great first boss. Well, for most people, first boss. Well, okay, probably second boss, actually, but it's a good early boss. I like, and I guess this is technically a design thing, but I think it's really cool how it's the Giant Lord. Sorry if you haven't, you don't know that. Um, I think that's really cool. Um, I don't know exactly how he recognizes you because, you know, you're, you're in completely different armor, probably using a different weapon, too, but it is what it is. Um... Yeah, I think that's cool. He's really fun. I think he's like the ideal of what a giant should be. It's kind of like the the Firebomb Giant and the Iron Golem fight, if it was good. I like how he tears off his own arm as a phase two. I think that's just really cool. It gives a lot of like weight to it, right? He's like, he doesn't know how to beat you and he tears off his own arm to use as a weapon. Isn't that like, that's just cool. I think that puts him at the top of B. His moveset's fine. I don't think Dark Souls 2 is clunky or bad or slow, like, you know, anything like that. I was going to say slow, but Dark Souls 2 is kind of slow, but that's not a bad thing. Yeah. The Pursuer? I mean, he shows up multiple times. The Pursuer, that's that makes sense. He's got a really intuitive moveset. Just because he's like, swing, 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 jump up, swing, you know, like, it's cool. He's got some, he's got, he looks cool. He's got a cool moveset. He really teaches, it's kind of like a little ADP check, which I think, little rant. ADP was a fine mechanic. Wouldn't be mad if they brought it back. It's... You get so many levels in Dark Souls 2, it's not a problem. You can get to 30 Vitality, like, before you kill your first, like, Great One. Great Soul, whatever they're called. And it's like, okay, you just balance that out by putting a little more into ADP. Or, if you're a Magic character, you don't have to worry about that, because you get your agility from Attunement. <clears throat> I think that... That is like the one thing that I would have been mad about ADP is like, oh, you can't really do sorcery builds, but no, you just get agility from attunement. So even if you're like min, like like mixing and matching, and you're like only kind of a sorcerer, you can still put some into attunement. You get more spell cast from attunement. You get so much from attunement, and you can do it for agility. It's like you don't even need 39 or 29. I don't remember what, exactly what the number is. You just need some. It's literally just a difficulty slider, honestly. Well, kind of. So anyway, with that said, I think the Pursuer is fine. I like I like his moveset. I like how you can cheese him the first time with the Ballistas, but you can't ever again. Uh, I like how he comes back. I like how he gives you uh, Twinkling Titanite. That's nice. I don't really have much against him. Yeah, I mean, he's pretty good. He's actually a pretty good boss. I'll put him, I'll put him bottom of A for now. Old Dragon Slayer. Now... Uh, I know H Bomber guy has said this. I agree with it. He want what? It's just kind of what Ornstein the Smell should be. That's not exactly what he said. Ornstein on his own is a cool idea compared to Ornstein and Smell. I think that's a cool fight, and I'm glad they did it. Rather than not, completely optional boss, completely like separate area. You know, I think it's cool. I think it's a little fun fight. The run back doesn't really matter. Cause like, I mean, you're killing this guy first try, and if you're not, you're probably not even gonna make it to him because you have that Drake. So it's like, 
you know, once you kill that Drake and you make it to the boss, there's no way the Brunback is going to be an issue. You can run past everyone. Maybe that Spear Hide Knight, Hide Knight, I'm, what am I, British? Maybe that Spear Hidey Knight is going to, like, mess with you a little bit. I don't like those guys, the Spear ones specifically, but other than that, the Runback's fine. I mean, it's just Ornstein. I think Ornstein's moveset works better in Dark Souls 2. I think it's, like, just made... I feel like it was made for Dark Souls 2, like, not actually, but the way the moveset is just kind of feels better in Dark Souls 2. I think I'm going to put him above Pinwheel. Dragon Rider. Not a bad boss. I like how you can... I like I like the mechanic of putting up the, the arena. You know, he does have a cheese, which is why I said he might be your first boss. It's like a free, free like, what, 6k souls? The fight itself, not bad. I like, I like dudes in armor. I like... It's just a fun fight. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, equal footing. It's good, right? Uh... Yeah, I mean, nothing special, though, is kind of the thing with that. Like, there's not, there's nothing... I don't have anything negative to say about it, but there's not, like, an X factor that puts it to, to a triple S, because there's nothing bad about it. It's just unremarkable. So I think I can't put it above Pinwheel. I think Ceaseless is, like, is better than Dragon Rider. Uh, Flexile? I'm not a big fan of Flexile. I don't like the water mechanic. I think... Because it's not a strict timer, right? It's a timer for the boss where, like, yeah, you could do it after the water rises all the way, but, like, I, what, are you really going to manage that? I mean, you will, but, like, it's just it's just annoying. It's because you don't really notice it, and then it messes you up, and it's like, damn, like, are you kidding me? I didn't really feel... I don't really feel like it's a fair thing. It's hard to notice. But... Other than that, I like how they're on both sides, so you can't really get behind it. But that's cool. I mean, you can kind of wait till one attacks, run up to the other side, and then that guy's not... That guy's usually not doing anything. Sometimes he is. I think it's interesting. I just don't think it was executed very well. I'm going to put him top of D. Ruin Sentinels. The best... One of the best multi-fights in the series. One of. I like how you can pretty much take them out one-on-one -on -one if you're good enough if you're efficient enough because the way i do it on my like normal playthroughs non-challenge runs because i still do those somehow is i take the first one out and then the second one jumps up and then i take him out and then i jump down and i kill the third one that's cool but if it's like a challenge run and i'm forced to not know everything about the game and be insanely just like run through the game it's cool i like how you can take one out to kind of get used to it and then you fight the other two, and then sometimes they throw their shield and become more aggressive, or, you know, they synergize really well with each other in a way that isn't unfair, or they don't cover each other too well. It's just, it's, it's, they put the, like, they put the pressure on you in a good way. It's not overwhelming. It's not Gwyn. But it's not, they cover each other perfectly, like Ornstein and Smell. So, yeah, I mean, that's honestly a really good fight. I think, I think S is, is fair. Now, Belfry... Is what the gargoyle shouldn't be. I think at a absolute minimum they're here, but they're way lower than that. I don't having three of them's annoying. I don't like how they attack. I don't like how quickly they like. I think the entire fight could be fixed if they got up a lot slower. Like I mean, not a lot slower, but slower. Like maybe ten seconds slower, and that would fix the entire fight. Because then you'd fight two. And if you messed up, you'd be fighting three, and then you kill one, and you have ten seconds at two. And if you're on your game, you take out a second one, and then it goes back to one, and then the second one spawns, right? And then you have two, right? It's it's like, it's like kind of four kings ish. I think it should have been more four kings ish instead of there's always three, except there's six. And that doesn't make sense. I don't. I think they go right above Calamity. See, this is a pretty Dark Souls two specific thing. But, in New Game Plus, the ads in that fight are really cool, because they're pyromancers, and that implies, you know, like, uh, like the Witch of Isolith, like, lore stuff, and I think that's a cool detail. Other than that, run back is pretty long. That's annoying. Uh, I like how, if it weren't for the flame butterflies, you could, like, you, you can't roll on the way, you have to bring a torch with you to, like, light up the arena which means you can't roll in the water, otherwise the torch goes out. 
I mean, you're probably just gonna have a flame butterfly and then you just light the torch and then you light the two things, you know, whatever. But I think it's a cool concept. I like that you could like do an optional challenge, at least that's the, con that's the concept, bringing a torch from the bonfire all the way to the boss to light up the arena to make it a little easier. I think the boss in the dark is really fun where you keep losing lock on and it's like, you know, it's kind of like a little horror game, kind of. <laughs> really quick, really hard to punish with certain builds. I think that might be a little bit of an issue, but I don't really know how negative that of an issue that is. Like, I, like, I don't really think it really matters. Because, like, if you're good enough, you can punish with any weapon. You, you, if Worst case scenario, you can just rolling attack, right? I think the chariot should have ended when you pulled down the lever. I think the additional fight against the horse is just a time waster. Because it's not hard. I mean, I've died to the horse before, obviously, but it's not hard. It's like, okay, I'm just doing this now. This is what the fight could have been. Could have been just this horse in the circle arena with, like, skeletons everywhere. I think it could have also been the gate wasn't even there and you like shot the chariot because you can shoot the chariot and you could kill it that way without even closing the gate and it has a special death animation. I think it could have been like kind of like a demon god situation from demon souls. Yeah, dragon god, not demon god. I, it could have been a dragon god situation where it's like you get to an area and then you shoot a little thing and then it takes damage and then you do that until it, it has no health and it does the special death animation. I think that would have been a, a, it made it a lot cooler, but as it is now, it's like, it's okay. I like the running and then hiding and then running and then I think that's fine. I just don't like the additional fight after the, after that gimmick. It just goes on a little too long. It's got some positives. It's got a cool idea. It is remarkable. It's better than the Dragon Rider. Not that these all are unremarkable, but I, yeah, I actually, it might just be there because this is a better gimmick. And this has a long run back with some really annoying enemies too. Especially that red phantom right there. I've, I mean, you can pretty easily, you can kind of easily roll past him sometimes, but otherwise you have to like jump to that side area and wait for everyone else to retreat. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's, a, I think that's a good spot. Skeleton Lords. This is, this is probably the only time I'll bring it up unless I remember to, or unless there's something else I'm forgetting about. But the music, the music is crazy good on this fight like probably one of the best tracks in the entire series um that is gonna give it points just just for it being so standout even though this is like a gameplay tier list that i, I like how if you're not thinking and you're not like really paying that much attention you'll kill the three guys and be like oh this fight's easy it's just three guys who aren't even that hard and then the horde comes at you and i think that's i think that's cool right it teaches you just to like pay attention more you know, kind of wait and see what happens. And then and then next time after you get ganked, well, you might win anyway, but you, you'll probably get ganked. You know, you kill one and then like the bone wheels spawn and then you get those. And then you, you know, you kill the second one and then like the armored guys spawn and you kill the last one and then the horde comes. I think that's a cool idea. I think it's probably the best execution you can get of this idea. It's not particularly hard or it's interesting. I, I was going to say not interesting. The run back is kind of fi is fine. Depending on where you run back from, if you bother to get that key for the lock away and free. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's really all I have to. So maybe, maybe above orange student smell. Maybe just right there. Is this, is C tier too long? No, because think about it. It's a relative tier list. It's like, it's kind of like a bell curve, right? Like this is the highest one. No, not a bell curve. It's like a standard distribution. Or it's like, you know, or, or what is that called? I don't know what it's called. I, you, whatever. You know what I'm talking about where it goes like, like this, like the curve. It's like that. That's what I'm kind of going for. Cause like you can't have, if you're doing it relative to each other, you can't have so many super good ones. So yeah, covetous demon. I don't think, feel like I have to explain myself. I will. I mean, it's boring. I like... I think the gimmick of shooting the pots is cool. I like how Dark Souls 2 encourages you to be a jack-of-all-trades and do this and that and that and that, right? Like, it feels like you can really do everything in your builds, but you don't have a reason to. Like, ever. There's one spot in the arena where you can... Like, that staircase you can't go up. If you get in that corner, you're dead every time. 
But other than that, this boss is insanely easy. Mitha, 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 Mitha. I think it's Mitha. Uh, my first playthrough of the of Dark Souls 2, I didn't drain the poison. Because I didn't know you could. And uh, that made that wasn't the made the fight was still easy. I'm not gonna I think I first tried the fight. Anyway. But I think it's a fine fight. I like I like it, honestly. It's fun. It's not particularly difficult. Maybe that's just because I'm, you know, I play this game like every week. But it's not that hard. Um, yeah. I like I like the attack specifically where she throws her head and then she like, you know, runs and grabs it after it explodes. I think that's cool. But Yeah, I mean, is there anything really special to say about Mitha? Mitha? I can't really decide how I want to pronounce it. Is there a She's got that one spin attack that's really funny. Where she like spins in place and it does damage. Eh. There's some issues with it. It's un it's got a it's got an it's got an annoying run back. And it's unclear how to drain the poison. Like, if you summon like the witch or whatever her name is, she'll point you to it, but like, you know, it's kind of the norm in the community to play without summons, I feel. So it's like, okay. I don't usually use summons because I don't need them. I didn't realize that. You know, it's kind of unclear. I think that gives it some, some issues that justifies me. I can't put it below Bed of Chaos or Taurus Demon, so I think that's fair. The Royal Rat Vanguard isn't a bad boss. Not a, not a bad boss. It's a fun fight. I, I, like, I like the group fight. You know, it's kind of annoying how you have to wait for the guy to drop down. I don't think it's bad. It's not hard. It's a, it's a, it's a gimmick fight to end a, a gimmick covenant area. I did get to experience it one time, and I think that's cool. I think I love, I love that Covenant area. I think it's a really cool concept. I think it takes like a Dark Souls one-ish idea, puts it into Dark Souls two. Great execution, with the Pharos's lock stones. I think that's cool. But other than that, what is there to say? Really, a fun fight takes a while. Uh, the shortest run back you could really have, <sighs> but it can't go above the Lost Center. Is the thing? Yeah, it can't go above the Lost Center. Yeah. I know I'm gonna get flack for putting the Royal Rat Vanguard above the Bell Gargoyles and Gwyn, but if you listen to me and you really, you know, I think, I think I'm right. The Rotten. This fight is, and I have not fought this boss in Dark, in Demon Souls, but I've seen it. This is the Adjudicator, reincarnated, and it's not a great boss. Like, not difficult. Doesn't, like, it doesn't really do any, you, like, I didn't even know you could cut off its hand? Is it its hand? I don't even know. I didn't even know you could. Because I didn't do enough damage. Like, I, I, I just killed it before I did enough damage to his hand or whatever. It just, it's just not. Like, <laughs> like, I don't... It's not worse than Seath, but like, uh, you know, it's just not. Nashka. Nashka's fun. I like the mix of sorcery and melee. Uh, I like the, the burrowing underground. The run back is completely harmless. It's, it's like a little long, but there's no enemies if you're yeah, I mean, it's fun. I like how you can cut the tails off. I like how you can get behind her with the tails if she does a specific attack. If you're, like, having trouble. But, I mean, again, that's cheese, so... It's cheese. Yeah, um... Maybe... Right there? Okay, Royal Rat Authority. I... I'm, like, coming around on this fight very slowly. You ask me again in a year, and I might put it, like, here. I don't know. If you got rid of those dogs... Easy, 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 easy beat here, even. I don't think that charge attack it does is difficult. You just have to know the tell of the animation. Because people just wait. They're reactionary, and they wait for it to, to like, charge at you. And then it's already too late. You have to wait for a specific part of the animation before it, it charges at you. And you roll then, and you just dodge it every time. I can't point out when, because I'd have to load up the game, and I don't want to play through to that part yet. Like, right now. I'll put it in E tier. I'll put it above, I'll, I'll put Seath and the Moonlight Butterfly below it. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, the Congregation. Apparently, in base Dark Souls 2, the prowl there are prowling maguses everywhere. I didn't know that. I could be wrong, too. I think this is a fine fight. It's not remarkable. It's kind of boring. Not that good. So, maybe, maybe here, actually, yeah. Maybe, maybe there. No, because it's not worse than the authority. It's not worse than the rotten. It's like it's like it's like there. 
Yeah. Duke's dear Freya. Freya, Freya, Freya. F-R-E-J-A? Yeah, it's Freya with a J. What do you mean Freya? Freya? This is Freya, guys. Um, so, I don't know what's wrong with my copy of Scholar of the First Sin. I've never cut off one of her heads. I've seen it happen to everyone else I've seen play the game. I've never cut off one of her heads. Maybe I just rotate around them enough that <laughs> I don't cut off either of the heads when I play this fight. The runback's annoying. If you don't have a torch, it is horrible. I'll say that. Uh, if you do have a torch, it's kind of harmless, but you should be using. You should be fighting the boss with the torch, so you don't have to deal with the spiders. But then you have to one-hand your weapon, and that's not possible for everyone, or you're using sorcery or something. So, I don't know, the fight's not difficult. I don't like that laser attack. Uh, yeah, not really much to say on it. It's kind of, like, it's an interesting fight. I like the two heads. I think the moveset's a little weird, like, cool. Okay, I'm mixed on the moveset. Because I like the ones where it's like the pendulum swinging attack, like, where they go back and forward. I don't like the one, the attack where she's just stomping all her feet around. I don't like that one. I think I just get hit by that one a little too much. Um, yeah, maybe it's not like a horrible fight. I'm a little tainted on it. I think, I think I'm really biased. I just, I can't be objective on it. I'll be kind to it and put it here. Uh, maybe that's a tier too high. Yeah, that's a tier too high. Yeah, that feels more correct. Smelter Demon, actually a good fight. Like, it's a good fight. The runback isn't difficult. You're just having a skill issue. I know Domo3000. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I have him on my channel. I'll pro I, Again, if I remember, I'll put up a card. I'll probably forget. Um, Has a video on, on the Smelter Demon runback. And, you know, it's not difficult. The fight itself, I like the gimmick. Since Dark Souls 2 has life gems, you have pretty much infinite healing if you're, you know, thinking about it at all. You can heal just... Ching, and then that pretty much outheals that. Um, the boss is fine, really. It's just, it's I, it, there's only so much to say that I haven't already said about uh, humanoid fights. I like humanoid fights. They're they're inherently fun to me. It feels, it just feels intuitive, and you get in that flow state, and it's fun. As opposed to like, not this isn't points against a boss, but like Sif, you know, it's like you have to really think about it, where it's like, oh, this boss is you have to think about how it's gonna swing. You have to learn the animation and like figure it out and then you can get into that flow state. But if it's a human, most of the time you're gonna you're gonna be able to like oh, he's charging up and his hand is in, is like above his head to the right. Oh, he's gonna come down either vertically or if his sword is, like, angled a certain way, he's going to do a diagonal attack, and he's going to end to the left of him. And it's like, okay, you know how to dodge that. You dodge through the swing. And that makes sense. That's easy to that's easy to figure out. And I like that. It just feels a re very fun, and you get good feedback. I think it's a good fight. I'll put it above... There's too many bosses in C tier. I'm going to move... That feels right. I feel like Flexile was in the wrong spot. Flexile is worse than Freya. Yeah, that feels a lot better. Old Iron King. Old Iron King. This boss is difficult to hit and has a decent amount of health and can knock you off. Uh, if you don't find that bonfire to turn off where you turn off the fire, uh, which you probably won't find that bonfire, it's gonna it's gonna be annoying, that run back, especially because the fire's on and you have to deal with that room with like the, the like 15 Alon Knights. Yeah. The run back is probably going to be annoying. The fight's kind of un like boring. Was the fight boring? Yeah, the fight's a little boring. Like there. Twin Dragon Riders. Repeat. You know, there's not really anything. I, I have the category. I have to use it. The Looking Glass Knight is one of my one of my favorite bosses. Um, I like the online element. I like the lightning. I like the shield. You know, you have to fight it a specific way. I, I like... I like how weighty the boss is, right? 
like he just has a lot of weight to him and like you know look at his armor it weighs a lot when you wear it too like it just feels like he's just this big guy and he's coming at you except for he's not that much bigger than you you know i don't know if that makes any sense but i i like that put him above put him above smelter put him above the silent demon um demon of song run back is tough well it's not tough it's tough if you do it in the like normal path there's like a you can take like the outskirts path and you know not really have to deal with anything but then that takes a little bit of time and it's kind of annoying he does a lot of damage like, I feel like you get hit by him, like, once, and, like, 98% of your health is gone. Maybe he goes, like, there. I like the gimmick of him having to, like, be out to be able to take damage. I like that. I like you hear this, like, angelic singing, and you're like, oh, am I going to fight, like, this thing? And then it's just this demon who's just, like, you know, singing. I like that design part. I think I'm... I think I'm taking design into account a little bit, but it's not gonna largely influence it. It'll like change like one placement. So like, you know, if I probably wasn't taking into account design, it could have been like there. You understand. I know you, you're, you understand, you're smart. I think that's a fair placing. Vel's, Veldstat is one of my favorite bosses in Souls. That is the best fight between you and a human. Like. He's not hollow. I'm doing design again. I'm I just I like Velstat and I want to talk about him, you know? I'm, I'm I talk about all parts of him. It's this like big guy before the final king, you know, the, you know the king's right beyond you. I'm i I'm not talking about fight. I'm not talking about It's very He's very big and lumbering and like he has this big giant bell that's ringing as he's swinging at you and like the attacks feel very powerful and they hit you and you get knocked back and it's it's all cool. And then he buffs his defense. He doesn't. He doesn't get stronger. He doesn't get stronger against you. He just like he's able to tank more. And I think that's a cool, clever design element that that not a lot of people really think about. Where it's like, oh, he buffed his. He's buffed. What is he gonna do? And you get hit, and you can't really tell if he does more damage. But like, no, he has bigger defense. He's ready to take more. I think that's cool, right? Is that just me? Yeah, I think I think I think that's fair. I'm biased. I like Veldstat, but I think that's a good spot for him. Guardian Dragon, uh, it's just a, it's, it's like Calvamy, just a little less offensive and boring, and that's like, okay, worst boss theme in the, in the series, horrible boss theme. This boss is bad, but he's underrated. Hear me out. He's not, he, she, I think it's a she, it's an illusion, but I think it's a she. She's not that bad. You really have so many methods to just, you know, run back and forth, take her, take her out easy, right? You can wait until she does the forward breath and then hit her a couple times and then run away preemptively before she lifts up and then wait till she does the forward breath again. You know, that's kind of what I do. It's really easy. It just takes a while. I don't personally find a problem with the run back because I like, I like the run back. Because even though it's really long, it's it's a gauntlet. It's a series of tests. Can you kill this guy, and then this guy, and then this guy, and then the final guy? You know, he doesn't respawn, so you only have to kill him once. And that's cool. That's fine. That's like a little mini boss. And that's kind of what the area is. This boss is completely optional. You're not even really inclined to fight it at all. I mean, it makes Benderick easier, but, you know. I don't think she's F. I think she's low E. I think she's low E. Dark Lurker. I'm biased against Dark Lurker. I think it's cool when she splits in two and the fight becomes really different. And it's two Dark Lurkers. The runback is atrocious. I guess I've heard that you consider the runback part of the fight, like it's phase one. And like, that's a cool thing in theory. But it just doesn't, even if that is the case, that doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't feel fun, you know? I don't want to run through this area every time, right? But, that being said, the fight's fine. It's, it's kind of hard, man. Like, it's, you know... I can't put it below the old Iron King, though. That wouldn't feel right. Now, Vendrick. You want to talk about a boss that has a lot of power? Vendrick has a lot of power. Vendrick will just swing once, and then swing again really quickly, and you're dead. <laughs> like... He does so much damage, and if you haven't killed all the giants, you are not killing him. 
which is a cool concept. A completely optional boss, you know, you don't even need to fight him. So if you want to fight him, you have to go gather all these different, like, all these souls from across the area. You know, you have to go through the memories, and then there's two in the world you have to fight, like, seek out. There's one in the gutter really hidden, and then you have to kill the, the ancient dragon for the other one. That's a cool concept. He's kind of boring, though. I don't think most people know he has a projectile attack, even though he does, just because he doesn't really throw it out. Uh, he just has a lot of damage. He's really quick. His sword is long. Kind of a boring design. I know he's hollow, and that he's like it's a good design, but it's a little un. It's, I wouldn't say uninspired. Boring. I say boring. I'll put him above Pinwheel. Yeah. Giant Lord. Giant Lord. He's definitely going above the last giant. Last giant part two. Except for. He's got a lot of similar attacks, but he's more powerful. He's got a sword. He's got all this. You know? He's, he's in a memory. You're fighting him in the past. That's cool. That's a cool. You're fighting a boss in the past to cause the history that you're living in. Because if you didn't kill the giant lord, you wouldn't have fought the last giant. That's like. That's like when you get the soldier's keen. That's when you do everything, right? So, it's cool. Uh, I'll put him above Sif. Yeah. Throne Watcher, Throne Defender. Throne Watcher and Throne Defender is what Ornstein and Smo should have been. I know I've, I've heard that before. That's not my original idea. I know that's a little controversial, but it's true, right? You got one guy who's a lot tankier, and one guy is a lot more agile. I can't, is that a guy or a girl? I don't know. I'll say guy, gender neutrally. Um, yeah, you got one guy who's tankier, one guy who's a little more agile. And they fight together, you know? It's not like they have their own move sets. Like, one runs at you, and then he hits you with a hammer, and then he jumps up, and then the other one dashes at you. And it's... They have... It feels like their move set is incomplete without the other. And that's why they don't die. They get knocked down and they have to wait to be revived. Because with if one were just were to just die, the other the other one's moveset doesn't make sense. One gets knocked down and you have to take out the other one really quick before he can res the other one. And then the fight makes sense again, you know? And I like how they buff. I like how they use like resin. It's cool. And it makes sense, you know? They they need each other to function. And that works. It's what Ornstein and Smo should have been. You don't get some phase two when one of them dies and they power up. It's, it's no, it's they need each other like Ornstein and Smo do, but it's it's just better. Uh, that that's that's a B tier. That is, yeah, that's a B tier. That that's a that's a top of B tier. And then the Chandra. One of not one of the worst. It's okay. It's like there. It's like there there. It's like th there. Uh, there. 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 Uh, curse is annoying. If you have, like, something that prevents curse, still annoying because your health drains. Um, one of the most underwhelming final bosses in the ga in the series. In any game, honestly. Worse than win, almost certainly. Uh, this is the final boss in, in if you have Scholar of the First Sin. Kind of going back to what I said about gimmick fights with uh, one of these guys. Gimmick fights that take forever aren't good gimmick fights. So, it's just boring. Like, you don't die to him. If you, honestly, if you could damage him while the he had his, he had his fire up and you would do more than, like, two damage, the fight would be a lot better. Because it's like, then, then it's kind of a risk-reward thing. It's like, oh, he's about to put his fire back up. Do I go for another one? You just never go for another one because you're going to hit him for 20 damage and he has like 4,000 health. You're just not going to do anything. So... He's not like harmful. Like, like, like this is the cutoff to like, okay, this boss is actively getting kind of harmful. So yeah, that's fair. Okay, we're into the DLC. We're into the Crown of the Sunken King, if I remember the name right. So we got gank squad. This is a gank. Like I will call this one a gank fight. <sighs> yeah.
yeah, I would call that a game. Like, that is one where it's like, okay, this fight doesn't really make sense. It's not a good fight. Uh, I mean, the run back is, it's a co-op fight. You know, I'm going to say this now. The co-op fights are going to get a little bit of feel. I'll consider them in the fact that you are playing co-op. If you're doing co-op, even if you just have one summon, this fight is fine. The run back becomes a little, pretty harmless. Just because it's like, yeah, I mean, you're not meant to take three on one. If you can even take two on one, that's fine. Especially if you get, like, him and him, and then you the, the other guy can deal with the archer in the back, and then boom. And then you each take one. You know, it's fine, right? So, in the context of co-op, it's going to go, like, here, right? Yeah. Alana, honestly, one of my favorite fights in the series, and that might be because of how well Veldstat and her uh, synergize. She's a little squishy. She has, doesn't have that much health. But if you do get to have that fight, it's really cool how well she kind of... I feel like she was designed to work well with Veldstat. I mean, I guess that's why she summons him. But that's cool, and it works well. So maybe... I think, I think she's better than Throne Watcher and Defender. She's got a lot of cool concepts going on with, like, the summon pool and, like, uh, I like how she has multiple, like, different ranged AoE explosions, but you have to watch and see which one it is. Is it the one that's right on top of you, or is it the one that's, like, beside you, you know? That's cool. <clears throat> that's cool. I like that. I think that's a cool concept. Okay, Sin. Sin is the first, like, outwardly good dragon fight. Like, you have ones that are, like, you know, harmless. Or not harmless, but boring. And then you have Sin. Sin doesn't like when you hit him, when you're hitting him from behind, you know. He'll turn around and he'll spit fire at you then. He'll run around, fly around, shoot fireballs and, like, like fucking dive towards you and that's cool I like I really like when he wakes up and he sprays the fire that's multicolored I I like how he his the durability mechanics work on him I like the durability mechanics in Dark Souls too. I like how that functions but I like how he has rough skin and it like damages your weapon so much you repair powder and if you're not prepared you have to scramble in the menu I think that's cool uh I think he's a good fight yeah We'll put him here because I feel like he doesn't live up to the hype that the DLC gives him, but he is good. Yeah, that makes sense. Smelter Demon for Crown of the Ivory King, I think. Uh, Smelter Demon. He's not going to be able to go above the actual Smelter Demon. But I don't think that's a problem. The run back is fine if you have other people, I guess, because you can pull the little lever and the other guy goes on the other path and then you go on the bottom path. Uh, the fight's not difficult. It's just like a raid boss. You know. You can go above your gank trio. Seralon. Seralon, Seralon. You're gonna get you're gonna get people talking about the runback. The runback's not bad. You just gotta learn it. A lot of people, when they have a runback to a boss, they will literally just run. They won't think about it. They won't think that it's part of the game. People think about runbacks and they're just like, "Oh, I can't just hold sprint." No, this this boss sucks. This runback sucks. You know, whatever. When really you have to pay attention. I think some of the like runbacks are cool when. It's not, like, overly annoying and stupid, but it's, you have to think about it and be like, okay, I have to do this and then this and then this, and I have to learn it, you know? It's, it's like its own little mini test, like the boss fight is a test. Sure, Alon, though, good, good fight. Um, really fun. One thing I don't like that much, but I think it's fine, is the different delays he can do. Because he has three different delays. That's fine. Like, that's not, like, something I'm going to get mad about. But it's a little more of a reaction thing. It's like, okay, how good is your reaction? Can you fight this boss? 
as opposed to like, okay, how how you know how good are you at the game? Um, yeah, that makes sense to me. So we'll put him. We'll put him below Alana. He's not quite as good as Alana. Fume Knight, though. I love the dichotomy between big fume great sword and little little teeny sword. Uh, I don't think if you're playing the DLC normally the smelter wedges are a problem. You're gonna you'll have enough. If you don't, you're looking for more before you attempt the hardest boss in Dark Souls 2. Um, yeah, it's like. Since the run back isn't really an issue, the boss is, I like how they made the boss hard. Like, he's- I think- I think he's one of the hardest in the series, honestly. Um... I'm trying to encapsulate my thoughts on him. I think he's really high. He might be up here. I like... I like the flow of the fight. I like how, in phase one, he's one-handing this big great sword. And so the attacks are really powerful, but they're really slow and telegraphed. And then he pulls out a, or not pulls out, and then he does, uses his little sword and does swipe, swipe, swipe. And you know, that makes sense. It feels right. And it does like a, a proportionally fine amount of damage. And then, you know, in phase two, he'll put away the little sword and just use the big sword and he'll get, he'll become way quicker. And then, you know, he has the really, one of my favorite attacks in the series is his really slow mix up. It's not set error, it's not Elden Ring, where it's like, here I am, charging up a big attack, uh, fake out, and then they, they like, almost go for it, and then they go for it to roll catch you. That's stupid. That's just like, okay, I got caught by that, but I just had to learn the, the dumb fight. So, it's like, you know, he, he attacks, and then he does the charge up, and you can tell if you know what he's doing. And then he just slowly moves his sword, and it does a shit ton of damage because the, the fumes coming off. Of it. And that's cool. That's such a cool attack. And it's like you can't be mad. You know, you knew it was coming, but you saw a big attack, and you were like shit, and you rolled into it. It's like you know, you, that's that's amazing. That's such a good attack. Um, I like his AOE. I like if you have the the the, is it the Veld stat armor on? He instantly goes into phase two because he's like, you betrayed me. It's like a lore thing. That's cool. Um, the arena's cool. I like I like that. I like how he's the final boss of the DLC. It's really fitting. I like his design a lot. Yeah. Ava. Ava's harmless. Ava's like here. She's good. She's not standout. She's good. So, the thing with Ava is she has a little bit too much health because I get a little tired towards the end of the fight and I I think every single death I've ever had on Ava is right at the end. And that's not me being greedy because I don't, when I'm at the last hit of a boss, I don't go for one extra hit and I get greedy because that's how you die. It's just the fight drags on just a teensy bit too long. Every time I die at the end, because it's like, the fight should have already ended. It's just a little too long. I'm getting a little tired. You know, that's fair. Ludden Zolan is the one boss I can't forgive, even in the in the raid boss, like, co-op thing. I can't be like, fine, you go here. You're going in F tier. Uh, Calumny's down here on principle, but... Burnt Ivory King. This is another boss I went back and forth on intently. That's only because um I think he's really cool. I really like the phase one like battle royale shit. I think that's really cool. I like how you can make the fight almost impossible by just instantly going after him after Ava. But, you know, you're not supposed to. I like how you can. I like his moveset. It's really unnatural. I like that. I'm pretty sure he left hands his weapon. Right? Yeah, he's left handing his weapon in the image. 
that makes it just a teensy bit harder to dodge to the attacks. And it's like, wow, that's something you don't think about, right? Because it's like, oh, this guy's left-handing his weapon. Fume Knight does that too. I mean, not in phase one mostly, but you know. You know, he's left-handing his weapon, so you have to dodge the other way. And it's just, it just makes the movements look a little bit unnatural because of how right-brained the world, or the right-handed the world is. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's a positive to him. I like his AoE. I like when he buffs, and it just makes the fight harder, but it doesn't last forever. And so if you live long enough, he'll unbuff, and then, or, like, his buff will go away, and then you can really rush him down, and then you'll catch him buffing again, and then you'll kill him, because, you know, you're probably having him dead by then. I think that's good. I think it's here. Like, I think it's B tier. I can't... I put it above here. I put it above... I think that's a good spot. Not quite the final boss that Sin is... But it's better than the Asylum Team. <laughs> the thing that's weird about tier lists of Souls bosses is because, like, when you consider, on its own, the Asylum Demon, ignoring all of these, every single, it's like, yeah, for me, that's a solid B tier fight. That's a B tier. It's not anything crazy, but it's not like mediocre or bad. But when you put it next to the Burnt Ivory King and the Smelter Demon. It doesn't feel right because these are just this one's so much more grandiose, and this one has a lot of baggage behind it. And then it's just the asylum demon, dude. He's like, you know, that just doesn't make it. It's hard to care or to 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 really put that into my head about tier lists. Maybe I'll do a like a, a theming tier list at some point. Eudex. Eudex is one of my favorite fights in the series, and that that is a bias thing. That is, that, that is a personal thing. I think the reason I love it so much is on my Fair and Dark run, which is my first ever challenge run, I had only played Dark Souls casually. I just randomly, in a call with a friend, uh, they were playing Dark Souls 3 for the first time I was showing them. They taught, they were doing like a melee build and they had played the game a little bit when I wasn't in call and I came back and they were like, yeah, hey, man, Sorcerer kind of sucks. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. Like, well, I bought this spell, and it didn't do anything. And I was like, which spell did you buy? Because I'm thinking, oh, he bought Soul Arrow from the Shrine Handmaid, and he said Ferrandart. And I was like, oh, no wonder you didn't think Sorcery was good, because it does, like, two damage, right? And so, I'm like, huh, what if I... I could probably beat the game with only Ferrandart, because I was already pretty good at Souls games. And I did. It took me months. It took me... It was really the first challenge. It was the first challenge run I ever made. It's the video that blew me up. I care about the video a lot. I don't like that video, but I care about it. I think I might redo. I might redo my Ferengard run. It'll still probably take me months. Definitely my hardest challenge run to date. But you can't get Ferengard till Fireman. So I had to learn Eudex fist only, and I had to parry him. And I had to just really study the fight and really appreciate it. I was the first boss I ever learned. Not just beat, I learned him. And there's just something so special and, like, so good about it, right? Like, I feel like the way you can parry him just kind of is like a fuck you to Gwyn, right? Because he's the only boss you can parry in one. It's kind of just... It's, it's kind of moving on from Dark Souls 1 and 2. Completely different combat, completely different everything. And... Like, visual-wise, too, Dark Souls 3 looks really cool. Or, I, well, I wouldn't... Okay. It looks different. It's just, like, feel as, it feels like it's moving on. It's the test for you, too. It's like, are you ready for Dark Souls? That's why Dark Souls... I feel like Dark Souls 3 is one of the best games to start with. And that makes Eudex a really good fight for me, right? Uh, Vort, on the other hand, I feel like, you know, different world... Vort could have been the tutorial boss. You scale him down a little bit, and he's the tutorial boss for Dark Souls 3. And that would have been a way worse Dark Souls 3, because I'm not a big fan of Vort. I think he's high. He's higher than everyone here in this tier, but he's not anywhere above E tier. I don't think he's a good boss. He's got some weird hitboxes in Phase 2. Phase 1 is overly boring. And if he didn't have a good theme, like a, like a meme-worthy theme, I don't think anyone would care about Vort ever. <laughs> okay, CRG. 
You'll see Curse Rider Greatwood gets a lot of hate. The thing with Curse Rider Greatwood, though, is he's not a bad gimmick fight. Doesn't last a long time, which is good. Um, the ads are a little annoying, but he kills the ads. It's kind of like a Nido situation for me, because I don't perma the Nido skeletons, and I you can't perma these guys. Um, might, yeah. I mean, not better. I think it's a C tier fight boss, but it's it's underrated. He can go there. Yeah, that makes sense. Crystal Sage. I've had to learn this boss on multiple different runs, many different times. This boss is really hard for the point it's put in the game. It might be one of the hardest bosses in, in like, relative to where it's at. Just because it does a lot of damage if you don't level Pomp of Vitality, which in challenge runs you often don't because you're trying to get as much damage as you can out of things. On a normal run, this bo that boss, is, it's kind of unremarkable. It's like, okay, I'm just like killing the clones and I'm killing this guy and unless he does the Soul Great Sword, you really can't hit me that much. Yeah. It's like... It's like, it's like, it's like better than Nishandra. Yeah, that makes sense. Deacons. Deacons. I like the Deacons. But... I don't think they're good. Do I like the Deacons? I don't like the Deacons. What am I saying? Do I like the... I kind of like the Deacons. I think... That's a good spot for him, actually. <laughs> um, you know... Biggest group fight in the series. Uh, phase 1 is easy. Phase 1 is kind of eh. Phase 2 is where the fight gets good, because... It's a timer thing, right? Deacons put up curse, and if you don't kill the ones that are putting up curse, you die. And if you don't have a poise weapon, people will be like, oh, well, then I, I can't really I can't really poise break these guys. And it's, uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, one thing you can do is you switch, switch to your fists and you punch them twice and they they're, they uh, poise break. Or you can just backstab them. And then they also, you know, they're getting backstabbed. They can't really put up curse. But, you know, you kind of have to take out the archdeacons that are, that are going to heal the main one. And then the fight is a little easy it's it's just a lot of kiting the deacons around trying to get the main one into a spot where you're not going to get hit by like four guys jumping at you the moment you go for him but that's cool I, I like that kind of crowd control thing the abyss watchers it's hard to encapsulate my feelings because they're really cool you know very very efficient very fast move set you know you have to you have to kind of work with the third one a little bit because sometimes he doesn't work with you, sometimes he doesn't hit anything. Um, really easy run back if you just run to the side and ignore the Void Wraiths. Um, void Wraiths. Void Wraiths? What? They're called Dark Wraiths. They're called Dark Wraiths. What am I saying? Dark Void Wraith. Huh. Uh, if, you, if you just avoid the Dark Wraiths, sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's not really, like, it's cool, and it works well, but it's just, there's just something done wrong. I can't put my finger on it. There's something that's not right about it that just makes it kind of eh, right? I think this that's a fine spot for it, bottom of B. But, yeah, no, yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, old Demon King, <laughs> Wolnir. I think that's fine for Wolnir. Maybe that. I think that's fine for Wolnir. Um, yeah, really boring. I wish... I wish the original plan for Wolnir went through, because it, this is specul speculative. But if you look at the screenshot for Gorm's Arena, it's a different. It's it looks way different. And your or er, er is speculated to have been where Yorm should have been in like a pre in like a beta build. And 
Wolnir has a special animation for killing him without the bracelets, which is interesting. And Yorm can be fought pretty easily without the Storm Ruler, which makes people think that you could have put Yorm in the catacombs and it would have been fine. You just turn down the resistances on his legs and his arms like they did, like, because they just turned it up and then they made the Storm Ruler a weakness. And Yorm's a fine fight, and then Wolnir could have been a fine fight. I think Wolnir could have worked a lot better if you didn't have those gimmicks of the bracelets. But with the gimmick of the bracelet, it's just kind of boring and fast. Like, I've gotten this comment from a, de a fellow challenge runner, Pi, on a, a run I did of Dark Souls 3, where she didn't know that Wolnir had a sword because nobody ever sees it. Nobody ever fights Wolnir long enough for him to pull out the sword, for him to summon the tougher skeletons, or, you know, for him to do all the special stuff he does. He has a lot of stuff going on for him, but you'll never see it unless you're doing, like, a challenge run where you have, like, some of the worst damage output in the game. And so he's just not, he's just not good. Uh, old Demon King... I feel like he could have been done a lot better. It's a fine concept. Like, I like that he's, like, one of the last demons and the demons are dying out in Dark Souls 3. But it... It doesn't... The fight is boring. It's just... Guy. And he kind of hits you sometimes if he feels like it. And he, he uses the, like, handle of his weapon to keep you from going under him where he can't hit you at all. And if you can get under that, then the fight's easy. Uh, and then sometimes he'll just drag you around, but but not actually hit you. And you'll get pulled around on his weapon. And then he explodes, and that's the only thing that ever kills him. Uh, is just his explosion, because I forget about it. And then, But sometimes, oh, he summons the fire ring, or he breathes fire down, and then you take some damage, and then it's boring. It's just boring. Pontiff... Uh, might be the boss that I have the second most experience with, besides the Four Kings. Where are they? Four Kings. Because I've done an all Pontiff run. I kinda hate that video. Um, Pontiff is really easy to parry, but Pontiff is really difficult. Pontiff is has a very don't let up kind of move set. It's kind of like Gwyn. He's kind of Gwyn, but just a little better. I think that would have made sense. I think it would have... Pontiff would have been a better final boss than Solo Cinder. Kind of feels like Gwyn reimagined, right? He he hits you a lot. So he has a flaming greatsword. Uh, he has a face too, unlike Gwyn. But he has a big attack at the start where he dashes forward at you instead of jumping forward at you. And he does these combos. Except for in 3, he moves around with you and... He does these cool spins and this and that, and it's just, it's cooler. It, it works a lot better, and it's better designed, and it's more fun. It's hard, not quite as hard as Gwyn, for me at least. If Well, if you're pairing, they're both super easy. I think, I think I put them above Pursuer. I don't know, it's boring. The range, you can't fight him range at all. He'll absolutely destroy you. The arrow rain in both phases is just a time waster. Uh, the little tiny magic things are, like, little, little soul things are annoying. They just make the fight worse. He never hits you. The the life steal scythe is just annoying. Just a time waster. Whole fight's a time waster. Disappointing end to a disappointing reimagining man. I'll, I'll give that a hot take. That's not a hot take. Yorn. Do I consider him as a gimmick fight, or do I consider him as a normal fight? I'm going to do the gimmick fight. Because normal fight, he takes like an hour, and like, or like 30 minutes. It's okay, I'm not going to I'm not gonna fucking bother with that, unless I'm doing a challenge run. Gimmick fight, really fun. I like, I like how his moveset is just meant to disrupt you from charging. You have to wait three and a half seconds to charge the Storm Ruler. He's going to stomp and and blast the thing, and you're going to get knocked down. You're not going to take damage, but he's going to interrupt you. And if you're far away from him in phase two, he'll do the fist jump, and I know he'll hit you then. And, you know, he really does everything he can to stop you from charging the Storm Ruler. Once you do charge the Storm Ruler, if you have enough stamina, you 
you swing the Stormbreaker once, and then you charge it, and when he gets up, you swing it again, and then he goes into phase two, and then you charge it again while he's just screaming, and then as soon as he stops screaming, you hit him again, and then, you know, you know, kind of chain reaction. But otherwise, it's a pretty good fight. Uh, it's not, it's like, it's, it's, it's like there. No, it's like... I can't put them above any of the Dark Souls 2 DLC, like, final bosses. Dancer. Dancer. Nice. Good boss. Good boss. <laughs> the whole fight feels like a dance between you and Dancer, and that's really clever. The way you weave between her, and the way she kind of, like, spins around and stuff is really cool. Um, I think she's really good at closing the gap into where she gets really dangerous especially in phase two where she'll do like the jumping attack and then she'll spin after and that timing still fucks me up so it's like you can't really run away you have to you really have to capitalize on the opportunities you're given and so yeah dancers get the run back is kind of harmless those lothric knights are annoying sometimes but not really osiris is like a d-tier fight i can't really be happy with osiris Phase 1 is miss you central, is you don't get hit ever, and then phase 2 is, oh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna charge and you're behind me, but this has no startup, and so you're just gonna, boom, half your health gone. And then you're gonna hit, get hit by that so many times, you're gonna run out of healing, and you're gonna die, even though that's the only thing I hit you with the whole fight. And it sucks, especially because behind that is... A better is a better Eudex. I think Eudex goes down into A tier, like here, and G Champion Gundir is just a, a part. Of it, you know, the fire's faded. He's he's not infested by pus, and he's he's powerful, and he's got he runs quick at you, and he doesn't let up, and it's it's just Eudex but better. Dragon Slayer armor, I feel like, is very superficially similar to Eudex or to Champion Gundir, and that works. I don't. I think. I think Dragon Slayer is a little worse. I like a lot of the, the like fake outs or like circumventions he does of Dark Souls Three mechanics. He does it in a good way, where it's like you hit a shield, and he shield bashes you, or he gets poise broken. Oh, what's this? Oh, he's charging up another attack. Boom! Right. And it's. It just feels like. He's he's trained and like covered his weaknesses. Although I know it's a hollow suit armor. And he's being controlled by the Pilgrim Butterflies. It feels like he trained and he got rid of all these weaknesses. And he's like, he's really ready for you. He swings and swings and swings. And, you know, he runs at you if you're if you're running away. I think it's just a really good fight. Twin Princes. Um, Twin Princes. That might be an A-tier fight. I like how uh, Lorian doesn't let up. I like how aggressive he is. I like how cool he is, even though he, his like legs don't work. I think that's cool. Uh, he might be above uh, Udex. I, I, I think phase two could have been better. I think they could have found a way to make him better. Maybe they do like the belt stat, you buff his health, phase two. Because I think the amount of times T reses is annoying. Like, I think... I think... Phase 2, ideally, is still just Lothric. Like, the health bar is just... Or, sorry, the health bar is Lorian. Still. But he's just buffed. Like, defense-wise. He has a bigger health bar. And they added more additions to his moveset. Instead of the res being an addition to the moveset, I think you just add, like, another swing or something. I like the teleporting. I think that really changes up the flow of the fight. Especially with all the different teleporting like follow-ups you can uh, he can do, I think the fight's fine. Yeah, it, it goes there. It, it's it's good. Yeah, it's good. I'm I'm. Yeah. Okay. Ancient wyvern. The boss isn't the boss. It's the it's the enemy rush. But that being said, that's not a positive. It's yeah. It's not a positive. You know. Uh, you, you're top of F tier, right? It, it's it's a it's a boring fight. Uh, Nameless King might be one of my favorite fights in the series. 
Phase 1 is fine, but Phase 2 is really fun. I like how much the Nameless King moves around, now he goes flying, and then he like dashes at you, and then he throws the lightning at his feet, and then boom, and then he does like the wind slam, and you know, I it feels very cinematic, and it feels very cool, and I like how you can get staggered, and get hit. I know, I know that's a thing more often with Dark Souls 3 bosses, but I feel like it fits him. Especially because he has the uh, the player character death animation. He go, he gets hit, and then he kind of leans forward, and then he falls to his knees, and then he falls to his other knee, and then he dies. Right? Like, that's cool. He has the player death animation. It's cool that they tied up that loose end from Dark Souls 1 of, you know, firstborn uh, Gwyn. At least I think that's what that is. I could be wrong. Um... I like, I like the fight. I like his weapon. I think that's cool. It's a cool spear. I is very cinematic. You know, I'm, I'm saying everything I said already. Now, Soul of Cinder. Oh, Cinder is underwhelming. Soul of Cinder is. I don't want to put someone else in C or D tier. He goes top of C. No. No, he goes... He, he, uh. he goes here. He goes there. Underwhelming fight. Some of the phases are really annoying. The only ones that aren't annoying are the straight sword phase and the, the curved sword phase. Because the magic phase, when he gets the homing soul mass, that's really annoying. Because you don't know when you're just going to take damage unless you get a stagger off. And the spear phase, every attack is annoying in the spear phase. Uh, but he can heal in the spear phase, and that's stupid. The other two ones are fine. And then phase two, it's just Gwyn. Just Gwyn, but easier. Like, they slowed him down, and they gave him a couple different attacks. It was fine. Okay, DLC. Ashes of Arian Del. This boss sucks. Uh, the wolves are annoying, the grave tender dodges too much, and he blocks too much, and he'll hit you while he's blocking, but also attacking, so you can't, like, hit him, like, like, he doesn't feel like, he doesn't get treated like an NPC, but he is an NPC, and it's, like, dumb. Uh, Frida, if they removed phase two, if it was phase one, phase three, would have been one of the best fights in the series. Phase two is annoying. Draws up the fight, and it's just not that good? I don't know. Father Arendelle isn't a good boss. So Frida, phase one, is fine. It's a great fight. And then phase three is a great evolution on that fight with an expanded moveset and, like, really cinematic things. And, you know, it just expands on the moveset and, like, levels it up. But phase two is just this in-between that I guess they had to do to connect it. What if Father Arendelle sacrificed himself and powered up Frida to Black Flame Frida, and the, and the arena collapsed and everything, right? That would have been great, but no, they had to make Father Ariandel exist as a fight. Didn't work. Uh, that being said, the fight's fine, I guess. Go there. Demon Prince. I'm biased towards Spring City. I think this is a great fight. This It's better than Throne Watcher and Defender, for sure, as a duo fight. I don't think it beats the Ruin Sentinels. I don't. I think it's an S tier fight. They can overlap, yeah, but that's not an issue. That's not negative. It's you have to learn how to deal with that. It's you have to learn how to pull away, and then when neither of them are active, you have to learn which one you're going to kill. And you know, you kill the the one you kill the one in pain because the one in below has the easier laser attack. Half light, bad. Not horrible, I guess, but bad. Uh, you know, annoying poise mechanics sometimes. These spears, I hate. Um, the painting guardians are annoying. I don't like how he can heal. I don't like how hard he is to hit sometimes. I don't like how hard he is to hit sometimes. Yeah, and then. Madeer. I've come around on Madeer. I used to be... I used, okay, I wouldn't put him down here, but I'd put him, like, here-ish. 
like C tier. I've come around on my deer. I think he's really clever and it's kind of what Sin should have been. I don't think he's better than Sin, or I mean that much better than Sin. Like I don't, I think he goes above Sin, but he is where Sin is. It's just the Dark Souls 3 version and it's just a little better. Gale is, oops, I reset the fucking, I reset the list. Uh, it's okay, it kept what it had. Okay, Gale is the culmination of everything Dark Souls 1 through 3. It is the final boss in the Dark Souls series, and it shows because Gale is here. I can't put him above human. I, I can't. Can I? No, I can't. He... They had one new idea. They had the best idea they could for a humanoid fight. And not that having a no new ideas for a humanoid fight is bad, but they had one new idea, and boom. They, they executed on it, they made it great. They made time pass a bunch, and they, like, hollowed him out physically, and, you know, now he's all he's all disheveled, and he's on all fours, and he's running, and he's like, he's like a beast, kind of. And then, as the fight progresses, and you hit him enough, he sees the blood of the Dark Soul, and he powers up, because he had, that is his blood, you know. Which is cool lore-wise, too, by the way. But, you know, then he powers up, and he's got this, he's got what the Abyss Watchers should have been. He's got the cape that follows behind him, just to, just to strengthen up your dodge timing. Because they don't want you to dodge on reaction. They wanted you to dodge, per, like, perfectly through it. Which, honestly, this is what Elden Ring should have been, is the, 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 the cape. They could have found new ways to do that. They didn't need to do their stupid delayed attacks that they do down here. Like, they, they could have done. Elden Ring could have been so good. It's fine. It's not balanced. It's just unfun. I'm ranting, <laughs> but it's just such a cool fight. There are so many, like, cinematic things, especially in Phase 3, when he does the, like, flip attack, and then he does the long flip attack while shooting his crossbow, and then he lands, and then he does the final flip. That is one of the coolest attacks in the entire series. Um, I like his, like, spin attacks where the capes go crazy, and, like, it just aesthetically is really cool sometimes, too. Yeah. Final adjustment. Stink. Link. Human Knight, Slave Knight Gale, Name of King, Bellstat, Sanctuary Guardian, Champion Gundir, Dragon Slayer Armor, Ruin Sentinels, Demon Prince, Grave Lord Nido, Giant Lord, Lothric, Eudex, Artorius, Sif, Pontiff, Pursuer, Dancer, Alana, Suralan, Watcher Defender, Last Giant, Four Kings, Looking Glass Knight, Medir, Sin, Ivory King, Yorm, Asalanim, Frida, Smelter Demon, Sola Cinder, Ava, Abyss Watchers, Capra, Lost Center. Move them. I think Lost Center's better than Capra. Royal Rat Vanguard, Chaos Witch Quilag, Bell Gargoyles, Gwyn, Old Dragon Slayer, Vendrick, Curse Rider, Greatwood, Pinwheel, Najka, Ceaseless, Dragon Rider, Golem, Skeleton Lords, Ornstein Snow, Deacons, Crystal Sage, Nishandra, Demon of Song, Executioner's Chariot, Manus, Osiris, Priscilla, Old Demon King, Aldrich, Mytha, Mytha, Horus Demon, Bed of Chaos, Congregation, Gaping, Centipede Demon, Dark Lurker, Old Iron King, Vort, Smelter 2, Gank Trio, Freya, Flexile, Wolnir, Rotten, Aldia, Rat Authority, Seath, Moonlight Butterfly, Half Light, Ancient Dragon, Ancient Wyvern, ah, oh, they're right next to each other, Covetous Demon, Stray Demon, Dark Sun Gwendolyn, Guardian Dragon, Belfry Gargoyles, Lud and Zolan, Grave Tender, Ludden's all in was worse than the Grave Tender. I don't know why I put that in there in that order. Um, Calamite, Fire Sage, Dragon Rider. Nothing jumps out at me. Okay, well, I'd like Dragon Riders better than the Fire Sage, but that doesn't count because these guys kind of don't count as bosses at all. Um, yeah. That looks like a good tier list to me. I know I got a l some interesting takes in here. Particularly towards the middle, I think, is where people will get mad at me. 
Uh, I know I'll get hate for this. I might get hate for this and this. Oops. Uh, maybe this. I think a lot of my Dark Souls 2 opinions are controversial because a lot of people think the majority of 2 goes down. But yeah. There we go.